Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We are here with the team of part of the developer team of traffic. Um, my name is Patricia Dugan. I am the head of community. My role is to uh, design and lead marketing initiatives which help and support our community to create great stuff with traffic. Um, online meetups are specifically crafted to bring you education around how traffic is being used to answer um, interesting technical challenges and questions. And today we are going to have Back to Traffic 2.0. We have just launched Traffic 2.0, which as you know, is a killer new um, version of traffic with new architecture. So what's going to happen is in the chat box, I'm going to give you a few tools. One is a URL so that you can sign up for us to notify you of upcoming meetups um, so that you can learn about where we're holding our recordings um, and just be in the know about what we're doing as a team. Second to that, at the end of the session today, we will have Q&A. Um, so save all your questions, put them in the chat box, put them in the Q&A module, and we will address them later. All of those questions and answers will go to a gist on GitHub, so you'll have access to that as well. Um, we have a few cool meetups coming up. One is with Rookout on Thursday. I will share that link with you. Uh, we also have Holiday Check, Rocket Chat, uh, Manuel Zap, and more. So please keep in touch on that so you can join us. And what else do I want to tell you? Oh, today our cast, our beautiful cast, are the hardworking developers, some of the hardworking developers of the traffic team. We have Ludo, um, a massively amazing uh, Rubik's Cube genius and awesome dude. <laughs> and uh, we have Julian, who is very, very awesome and well known in the Go community, as they all are. Um, he's also a Rubik's Cube dude, so don't hold back if, you're, if you want to challenge him. We have JB. JB is fun, funny, awesome, cool, and all those adjectives. Gerald, Gerald is a wonderful <laughs> human and I will stop right there. And then we have Damian, our developer avocado and very, very wonderful human being. Um, and so with that, I encourage you, please keep an eye on the chat box for some re resources I will share with you. And then let's uh, watch them share with us what is going on with the architecture and the tools and features of Traffic 2.0. Take it away. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. So once upon a time, during the dark ages of orchestration, our infrastructures were manually uncrafted. And one day, the container technology went on the broad lights, not only somewhere hidden in the data center. That change was huge and totally changed the way deployment were done. This is where traffic was born. Three years ago, that open source project arrived to be the dynamic edge router to avoid you having to configure batch and batch of configuration. But yeah, three years have passed, which look like an eternity in our hurry of walking. After 600 million downloads and thousand stores on GitHub, yeah, traffic had to do something more because, yeah, the landscape totally changed. Today, Docker is the de facto standard for running processes on machines and Kubernetes won the orchestration war. As the context changed, we totally had to revamp some things in traffic. So here you are. The team will present you some of the main features of that new 2.0 alpha version. We revised the architecture, we changed the way to express the routing syntax, we added some new concepts, but also we improved the way you manage and use traffic. We broke in TCP routing, we created some cool stuff on Kubernetes, we added SNI routing, more protocols, and so much more. So yeah, time for me to pass the mic to Gerald. Gerald, your turn. 
Hey, so thank you, Damien, for the, the story about traffic and Patricia for this great introduction. <laughs> so um, now uh, that we all know what traffic is, I guess it's time we talk about the new features. Uh, can I change the slides or? Hmm. Let's see. Yes. So I'll start with talking about traffic's architecture and how it translates into its configuration. We'll see the concepts and keywords you need to know to express what you want to do in traffic. First element here uh, are what we call the providers. Uh, the providers are the components that know what exists on your system. They enable traffic to discover the services and they provide means to attach information to your services, whether as labels, tags, uh, annotations, uh, and so on. In the demonstration later, we'll see that we'll use two different providers, one being Docker and the other being uh, the plain old configuration file, uh, which is the simplest kind of providers where we humans play the role of the orchestrator, which is not as dynamic as a real computer, but well, it, it used to work somehow. So with providers, traffic knows how to detect the components of the cluster, and it needs to create routes, the link between the requests and the services. Mm -hmm. There, sorry. So, a route starts with an entry point. Entry points are basically open ports that will accept incoming requests. And there is no other intelligence here. You tell traffic to listen to ports and, and that's it. On the right, uh, something we talked about, I think, already, uh, the services. For traffic, services are a way to reach the actual programs that are hosted on the cluster. They can be as simple as IP addresses. And of course, if you deploy multiple instances of a given service, you can tell precisely how you want traffic to load balance the request between the servers. And finally, in the middle uh, stands the real intelligence, uh, the routers. They are responsible for analyzing the request and for warning the request to the service in charge. And to tell a router what to analyze in the request, you give it rules, expressions that define the form of the request uh, you're interested in. It's host, path, parameters, headers, uh, and so on. So really, uh, if the automatic configuration you get from the provider is not enough, uh, all you have to understand to tweak the default behavior of the route is, is this. Requests land on entry points, routers listen to these entry points and see if the request match a set of rules. And if so, they forward the request to the right service. And since, uh, these routing expressions are such a critical part of the configuration, we decided to tweak the syntax and make it more user-friendly in version two, which is why we came up with a classic syntax that support operators like and or parentheses, and that look like regular function calls that appeal to developers. And we might have been biased here choosing this kind of syntax. So here on the example, it's a rule that will match if you're calling anything on api.domain or if you call the slash api on, on domain. A side note for former traffic users, we have only kept the matchers in the rule and we've gotten rid of the modifiers that used to exist. And these modifiers are now replaced with middlewares, uh, even though middlewares are much more than that. But I will let Jean-Baptiste uh, talk about them in more, in more details. Thank you, Gerald. Yes, because You're routing welcome. and tweaking 
a request are two different things. Middlewares are components that can update the request before it is sent to the service, or components that can update the response before it is sent back to the client. There are already many kinds of middleware available in traffic, from changing the path to adding authentication or modifying the lifecycle of the HTTP request. Many things are possible, and we hope many more to come. And of course, you can find the list of available middlewares in the documentation. So, let's take a look at an example using the file provider. Here, we define a router named to who am I that routes requests on domain.com slash who am I to a service called who am I. But before routing the request, the router uses two middlewares to tweak the request. It will first apply the test user middleware, which is the basic authentication. Then it will apply the add foo prefix middleware, which adds a prefix to the URL. So, yes, we can combine pieces of middleware together to form a bigger middleware. If you need to use the same sequence of middleware over and over again, you can define middleware chains. Let's see how. Here, we define a middleware chain called secured. It contains two pieces of middleware. First, the nose IPs that forward requests from authorized IPs only. And the second, the hot users that applies a basic authentication mechanism. The chain is used both in router one and router two. The router two also uses the HTTPS only middleware, which is a scheme redirect middleware that ensures we only get HTTPS requests. So, as you can see, you can combine as many middlewares as you want. And yes, you can use chain in chain in chain and so on. And don't worry, traffic will yell at you if you define an infinite loop. Let's, take, let's talk about the cross provider support, which is another exciting feature. Traffic has always supported several providers, but traffic too can mix them together. In other words, you can define any element, such as services, routers, or middlewares, in a provider and use them from a different one. Let's see how. We still have our secure middleware from before. We like it and we would like to use it everywhere. In this case, in a Docker container. How do we do that? So the file provider already has a secure middleware configuration. Nothing to do here. What we have to do? We have to tell our Docker container to use it. So we have to add the label with a um, prefix on the middleware name. It will be the file.secured name. So we define how to uh, found the configuration in provider. And that's all, it will work. I will give the floor to Ludovic who will tell you about the Kubernetes provider. And that's all for me. So, so Zoom doesn't work, so, oh, sorry. Yes, so uh, Kubernetes will be usable in two different ways now, strict ingress or traffic ingress routes. Um, the provider strict ingress is based on the classic ingress, but we have removed the annotation. We have removed the annotation for several reasons. Um, some potential security issue, the so difficulty of use for complex configuration, etc. But the main one be, being that the annotation uh, will never be standardized by Kubernetes. Um, the annotation, but especially ingress, did not allow us to use all the functionality of traffic. The ingress are, and annotation are too rigid so uh, we introduce a CRD called Traffic Ingress Route. 
A CRD is a custom resource definition. It's a way in Kubernetes to define um, and use custom configuration elements. It's also a way for us to enter to the debate about uh, future of ingress. Um, thanks to the traffic ingress route, it's now possible to use the new routing syntax. And uh, this allows to do a routing based on all the usual criteria in traffic. So header, query, method, pass, host. Is it, um, this is as easy to use as an ingress. Um, it's even easier. It's now possible to easily use all the middleware with a configuration very close to the other provider syntax. Then it will be much more easy to use or migrate to Kubernetes. So I will give the mic to Julien, who will tell you about TCP. Uh, thank you, Ludo. Um, so, uh, yes. Um, my mission today is to talk to you about an exciting feature, uh, the TCP feature. But uh, what does it mean, uh, TCP feature uh, in traffic? In fact, uh, it means uh, that uh, you will be able to do some uh, TCP proxy, uh, but without routing. Uh, it means that you will uh, be able to catch all the connection on a port and just um, forward uh, those connection to one service, only one service. But this is traffic, so we will be able to do some routing uh, on TCP too. Uh, we'll do routing uh, based on OSTSNI. So if you have a TCP connection uh, with TLS, uh, we, will be, we will be able to use uh, the host SNI uh, to uh, just route uh, your uh, TCP connection to the right service ba based on uh, the server name. And about this TLS port, uh, we will be able to do some TLS termination. And so uh, traffic will handle all the TLS stuff, uh, we'll do the end check, and then uh, we'll just forward uh, the connection to your service uh, without TLS. And your service doesn't need to, to have TLS. But uh, you will be able to do uh, some TLS path through too. Uh, and that means that traffic will just um, analyze uh, the TLS port to just take the host SNI and do the routing. Uh, but then uh, it will delegate uh, all the TLS port to your service. Uh, let's uh, see this with some uh, configuration example. Uh, the first one is without routing. As you can see here, we just uh, configure an entry point uh, named SSH uh, on the port 8022. And then we'll have a router a link to this entry point uh, with a rule uh, on host SNI with a wildcard. And it means that everything on this entry point will be forward to the service name SSH. And so if you connect with, we connect you with SSH on traffic on the port 8022, you will be forward to your server. Next example, this is uh, with routing. Here, you can find the entry point too. Uh, but there is two routers. And the difference is that you have specified on the host SNI part, the server name you want to use to do the routing. And so you can see that uh, one router will just uh, analyze and see domain one and will just send to the domain one service. And the other will analyze domain two and then uh, route to the domain two. And you can see that we say that this is some TLS service in the router port. Next example, uh, we will talk about uh, the TLS port. Uh, and so uh, if you put the TLS option on your routers, you will do some TLS termination, okay? This is uh, the case in the domain one routers. But uh, if in your TLS port uh, you uh, indicate that uh, you want to do path through to true, 
uh, it will pass through. And you can mix uh, both uh, because here we can see that when you will call uh, the domain one, uh, you will do TLS termination, but on the domain two, we'll just do some pass through. Uh, let's see this uh, in a demo uh, with Damian. Okay, demo time. Nice work, team. So the context of that demo is to showcase diff the different use cases with the TCP level and manipulating some of the new architecture concepts, aka the rotors and services. So that first example will be a simple traffic reverse proxy taking care of handling requests from a MongoDB client to a backend which is running the MongoDB database. Everything will run inside Docker. That's the first example, so we can cover the basics again. So here you are. Let's start with that Docker Compose example. The first service is traffic itself. This is a service named reverse proxy. So we enable the API, we enable the dynamic configuration from the provider Docker, and we create an entry point on the standard MongoDB port. Obviously, traffic being the age router of your platform, you need to expose the ports for both services. So the first 88 is for the API and the second one is for Mongo. The volume share is to let traffic be able to watch Docker API. So don't do this in production, obviously, for security reasons. It's just a demo. Secondly, we have our backend service, which is a bare MongoDB image, and we provide two labels. These labels will enable traffic dynamic configuration and to create dynamically the routing. The first label is a bare TCP routing, which say on the port 27,017, we catch every request. It's the simpler TCP example we can find. And we have to explain, to tell traffic which entry point to be used for that backend. This is the entry point Mongo we declared in the beginning. So let's start with this demo. Step one, I'm starting on the traffic. Traffic starts and it don't have anything to run, of course. Now time to start our MongoDB backend server. Let's see the results. We have two services running without issue. So now it's time for us. So I have a cheat sheet, obviously. It's time for us to connect to the Mongo image. So we have a Mongo client running on my machine and we connect to the host mongo.local, which is the host name of traffic. It points to traffic itself on the port 27. And here we are. We have a complete TCP connection through traffic this time. We are not dealing directly with the MongoDB example. So while I'm cleaning up the environment before switching to the next, next demo, Let's see what happened during that example. We had the incoming requests coming from the Mongo client running on my machine on the entry point on the port 27,017. The routers had been detected dynamically by traffic by watching Docker, the provider Docker, and we had one rule host SNI that intercept every request on that port. Once the request is cooked, it's sent to the service, which is the private IP inside Docker of the Mongo container. And that the request is sent to MongoDB. That's the simpler example you could know. So we have a first base. Let's go further and dig inside traffic V2, new features around TCP. Now we want to terminate to create to add TLS in the equation, and we want that TLS to be terminated at traffic level. 
Because right now you need to secure the connection from your client, your Mongo clients to the infrastructure, but you didn't have time right now to enable SSL at the MongoDB server level. So let's tell traffic and ask traffic to do that termination for us. Let's check together the demo Docker Compose file for that. What is the difference? First, I have to give to traffic the certificate. This is the line added on line nine. The ports are the same, the other option provided to traffic are still the same. And obviously we have to give the certificates to share this certificate inside traffic. So traffic can use these certificates for TLS terminations. That's the only change to traffic. So, okay, let's start again this demo. Let's start traffic. And MongoDB also. So now we have a server named Mongo1 based on the bare image. And that server has an updated label configuration. We are still catching the old DSNI. We only have one server. Except that now we tell traffic to use TLS termination for that specific backend application. The rest is the same. We have Mongo. So let's see the difference here. If we try to run again, the same command as before, you'll see that we are not able to reach the database. The reason is simple. We are trying to reach Mongo without using TLS for securing the connection from the client. So I cancel the previous command and let's run this one. So the new command just tell Mongo client to use SSL. It use our own sign certificate, which is served by traffic. And here you are. We are connected directly to that new MongoDB through a TLS connection until traffic. So we don't have TLS inside infrastructure, but from my client to the infrastructure and the edge router. In that case, we have a complete TLS encryption over TCP. So let's clean that environment and let's wrap that demo to concept. So it's almost the same, except that we enable TLS termination. Let's go further now. We want for the same entry point, meaning traffic on the same port, we want to be able to route request based on the ECNI, now that we enable TLS, to two, Mongo, two different MongoDB databases. One database is the previous one. It's our legacy database, Mongo1, that don't have TLS enabled. And the new added player in the game, the MongoDB2, is configured to have TLS because this is the new version for our new cloud native environment. So we will have to do blue green deployment at the moment, but we still want to have only one route for both and still have the same certificate and same termination. So in one case, for the previous, we have termination of TLS at traffic level. For the second one, traffic will take care of path through and send everything as it is, so termination will be done at MongoDB server level. Let's check that second example. It's almost the same again. We try to make it simple. First, traffic. No fix chain, nothing changed at traffic level because adding new backends is dynamic, so traffic stays the same. The Mongo one is the same as before. We haven't changed. This is our legacy database. And finally, we had a new player, Mongo2. In that case, this is a Mongo server configured to use our certificates, which is shared from the host in that case. The only change is that we updated the host ECNI to take in account the host name of each server. 
So then traffic will be able to route to one or the other, depending on that information. Please note that we also enable the path through. So TLS is neighbor, but won't be decoded at traffic level. So let's go, let's start everything. Let me open my cheat sheet for the commands. So what do we have now? We have three services, Mongo1, the legacy database, Mongo2, the new one that takes care of SSL at server level for end-to-end -end encryption, and our traffic reverse proxy. So how are we sure that the routing is working? Let's connect with our client in SSL mode to the port 27017 that point to Mongo1, which is an alias that point to my traffic instance. So here, to be sure that we don't have any issue on the routing level, we're gonna create a new database named Meetup. Let's insert some content inside that database. So this is our Mongo1 legacy database. So, oh, type on my side, you see that we have created that one. So now, if I connect su successfully to the new database Mongo2, we should not see the meetup. So you are sure that I'm not lying to you, right? Let's go. I'm exiting the command prompt on Mongo1. And it's time to connect to the brand new database that takes care of SSL on its own with the path through. And here we are, we have connected just on the Mongo2 on the same port, which is still going through traffic. Let me show you that, oh, two times the same typo. So here we don't have the meetup. We definitely have a new database. We are same the same route until traffic and then traffic takes care of everything for us. So let's wrap this. What did we have? Every request mongo1.local or mongo2.local came in TCP with TLS enabled in both cases on the entry point 27017. Then we have two routers. So here for mongo2, we have the second routers that takes care of the host SCNI for routing. That's what we did. So one last thing. You know that we can also mux the traffic of TLS and HTTP as soon as TLS is everywhere. So let's add a third backend, which is an HTTP web UI that will help us inside the web browser to access to the Mongo1 DB database. So the connection between the HTTP new service to the Mongo1 won't be encrypted. However, we still want to use the same port. So if you happen to use the same entry point as the MongoDB connection on the port 27017, then you will be able to see the web interface if and only if you use the hostname dashboard. Let's go through that demo again. So the Docker Compose is still pretty straightforward. Nothing changed at traffic level. Nothing changed at Mongo1 level. Still the same configuration as before. Same for Mongo2. It has SSL termination at its own level. And we added a new web service. So it's based on Mongo Express. Uh, we configure which database do we want to reach, Mongo1 in that case. And the configuration is almost the same, except we are using HTTP this time compared to the CCP before. However, we still connect to the same entry point, so the same, um, the same port in, on the edge router, and we still enable TLS because we want HTTPS, right? And here is the host name you will want to use. Please note that it's not host SNI in that case because we are using HTTP. So the rule is the HTTP rule set and not the TCP rule set. So let's start this stack. Okay. We have now four services, one traffic, two MongoDB databases and one web service. You could guess 
The previous command, like mongo2 local connection, are still working. You see? So let's connect to mongo1. And since this is a brand new database, let's create a new database meetup. So let me take my check sheet again. I'm not good enough at MongoDB shell. So we created on Mongo1 a new database named Meetup. So now, time for us to access the, that new URL, which is reaching the web service through HTTP on the same port. So let's go. HTTPS on the port 27017. And here you are. Oh, the zoom. Uh, that's the. You see that we have access. So, what does it mean? It means that we were able to reach through the same entry point and the same port, but in HTTPS. So, that's the end of the demo, and that's all for me. So, now what's next? After all these new brand new features, first of all, this is your project. This is not only ours. So please contribute. Contributing is as easy as doing something useful for the project. So don't worry if you don't know how to code in Golang or if you don't know the archons of internals in traffic. Speak about traffic V2 if you are interested and you think that it is worth sharing it with your colleagues on local meetups, on conferences. Please speak to us or to the community if you have a really cool or crazy use case with this. You can also open issue if you manage to break that new version. That means don't hesitate to try this new version. Maybe not in production, it's still alpha. And if you are really willing to, please help us because your name could be one of the implementer of the following features, you know, Canary, the new brand web UI, more providers, as for today, we only have implemented Docker and Kubernetes and Mesos for that version, metrics, YAML-based configuration, UDP, whatever. Please help us to do the next useful feature that you want to see here. If you want to know a bit more about what we saw today and upcoming feature and the context, do not hesitate to read the following blog post here that I'm sure someone from the team will put inside the chat room. So yeah, that's all for us. It's time for you, the mic is yours and it's time to answer the question you raised during that meetup. Thank you team, awesome work. Um, everyone who's in, attendant, in, in attendance today, thank you for being here. So we have a lot of questions that came in and so what I'd like to recommend is um, we have about 10 minutes according to the slot, but if you'd like us to go a bit long to answer more questions, please give us a sign by, you know, saying something in the chat box. But until then, we're going to get started. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with a question for Julian, or two questions. Uh, Julian, can the TCP entry point use Let's Encrypt? Uh, yes, <clears throat> in fact, uh, you um, can use Let's Encrypt uh, on um, TCP or uh, HTTP. It's the same because um, this is just one more certificate in uh, the dynamic configuration. So yeah, it will work, yeah. Okay, cool. And then what about with the current version of traffic, you can't use the same Let's Encrypt certificate on multiple ports. Will this be fixed in 2.0? Oh, uh, in fact, um, in uh, the version one, uh, TLS uh, was on the entry point port. So yeah, it was um, only for one entry point. But um, as you can see um, now, uh, TLS is on the water port. And not now, but uh, in uh, uh, future, um, you, you will be able to configure uh, on uh, what store you want to use certificate. And so Let's Encrypt will just put certificate on the store. And so it will be on the router port. So the router can be linked to uh, any entry point you want. So you will be able to uh, do this too. 
Very cool. And then one more, which is, could you have HTTP and TCP endpoints using the same host name? Uh, on different ports, yes. But if you use the same port, uh, we, you will not be able to have uh, the host name for one TCP and one HTTP because uh, when uh, we will just um, look at the host SNI uh, for the TCP router, we will say, okay, it match. And so we will just forward the traffic to this TCP service. Uh, but if you use different ports, yes, you will be able to do this. Okay, well, thank you. Um, Gerald, are middleware always applied left to right? Uh, simple answer, yes. It's always from left to right, uh, including in the chains, uh, except for well, this is for the request, but for the response, it's from right to left. If you have response modifiers that remove some headers or stuff like that. Very cool. And can service be a middleware? Huh. Uh, this is, I'm not sure uh, what, what the person meant in that question, uh, but a service we don't have a middleware that points to a service. I, we haven't considered the option, but uh, no, right now it is not possible. Okay, cool. Um, and then our middleware for ingress only. Okay, uh, once again, I, I'm not sure about the question, but uh, middleware uh, are available for every provider, so they're not exclusive to Kubernetes and to uh, the, the, the CRD we saw uh, uh, during the presentation. Uh, but middleware are attached to the routers. Uh, we had discussion about attaching middlewares to uh, entry points or services but this is not something we are currently working on, but it, it might be possible in the future if we deem it really necessary. Cool, thank you. And now we have You're something welcome. from Pluto, which is, um, it looks like the new ingress route CRD will ease setup of canary routes where multiple services will be uneven weight. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> it's a short answer. Yes, it's correct. For now, it's not implemented, but we we will work on that uh, soon. Okay. So. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Was there more? Yeah, and then is there an ETA for Kubernetes provider support? Um, currently, um, the two providers are implemented. You can use uh, the strict ingress and the CRD. For now, you cannot use TCP with uh, CRD, uh, but we, we are working on that also. Okay, well, I think it's time to hand over some uh, lion's share of questions to Damian. Damian, do you just want to kind of lead this yourself and uh, we'll listen? Yes, totally. I admit that I might sometimes cheat and ask help from the team. <laughs> so the first question, will the slides be available after the webinar? The answer is yes, the slides will be available um, with the recording. So stay tuned, you might receive a notification and on YouTube, we will put the slide link in the description. Um, how can manage the east, west, and north south traffic with traffic as edge router and envoy proxy as sidecar? Um, I'm not really sure to understand the challenge here in the sense that this should run in a Kubernetes environment. And as you can install different ingress controller, you can totally install both and do the best job for the best tool in whatever challenge you could have. So I would say install both and use them for each use case. So next question, 
current traffic version, so not the 2.0, can store ACME certificate in a file or a KV store. The latter helps with running a cluster of traffic, but the storage is restricted to uh, 522 kilobyte of certificate information when using console as a KV store for storing certificates. Will this improve? Because storing in a key pair certificate instead of single key for all, for example. Um, I raise my hand for help here. I don't know what is the plan for this. Can someone from the team could help or have an answer or I'm alone? What's the question again, Damian? It's um, will the limits of um, in size of certificate stored inside console on a KV store uh, will improve in the future because there is a limit on the current one dot something uh, traffic version. For for now, it's not in your plan in our plan. Um, I, we cannot see more on this, but. Uh, we know the issue. <laughs> we really know the issue. So the next question is, will the whole language be kept for backwards compatibility? So my understanding is that the answer is short, it's no. Unless I'm missing something. We, we might provide tools to help uh, during the migration process, but the new configuration uh, provides more features and more options, so we won't be able to to have an automatic tool that does everything. But we might do something that will help, definitely. Thanks, Gerald. So the next question is, why is watching the Docker daemon like that bad? That is in every traffic and Docker how to I have ever seen. So yes, it's a fact. A lot of example and not only traffic are bind mounting the Docker sockets, as you see here. So why is it bad? It means that traffic will have an unrestricted access to the Docker API. And as traffic is an edge router, you have requests coming from the outside world that you cannot manage at all. So if, if anything malicious, breakout traffic or the container itself, these external requests will have full access to your Docker API and you don't want this because it might start and stop your container, not even mentioning that Docker by default run as root on the underlying machine. So what are the solutions? As explained on the traffic official documentation on the current stable version, you might want to add a layer between traffic and the Docker engine by using a TCP socket. So then you could put authentication and authorization. Authentication will be done with client side certificates and authorization will be restricting what traffic can do on the read-only access requests. Our documentation provide a few compensation measures, an example of some kind of Docker only proxy. You can also install OTANT and authorization plugin inside Docker or Docker use Docker Enterprise Edition if you are willing to use Docker only or Docker Swarm. In the case of Kubernetes, it's way different. It's already baked in. Next question is, will it be possible to have traffic automatically managed? Let's encrypt, oh no, how? Oh. Let's encrypt certificate which are stored as a Kate secret. So if my understanding is correct, you will want to store certificates on a Kate secret and point them to traffic so it can use them instead of providing a file mount. So as for today, it's working. I'm not sure, Ludo, can you confirm it will still be the same with the new version? Sorry, I was mute. So, uh, yes, if we speak only about certificates, but we will not manage, we will not store for now, 
um, the let's say, certificate to secrets. So, so our certificate well, already is stored, we can. So we can read, but not write. Okay, thanks. The next question is, can custom middlewares be created? So uh, I can take this one. So currently, uh, there is no plan in version two uh, to be able to create custom middlewares. Uh, we know that this is a feature that a lot of people are looking for, but it, it probably won't be in 2.0. Uh, but we think that developing new middlewares uh, is really easy. So if you have ideas in mind, uh, we're, we will definitely welcome new middlewares uh, for version two. As we said before, yeah, you can contribute. Raise your hand with an issue explaining the use case, so then we can start the discussion. Thanks, Gerald. Next question is, is it ready for UDP instead of TCP? I, I will take that one. Um, I, I'm not really sure what, uh, what you mean by it's ready, uh, but um, we, we we have some uh, tests on this uh, and uh, it will work and it will be on the uh, alpha uh, two, uh, I think. Uh, the real question is how to do uh, some routing. Uh, for now, uh, I think that uh, the only thing uh, we, we will do is just without routing, like the first example of TCP, but um, we, we need to, to go further for that. Again, if you have a use case that will require UDP, do not hesitate to raise an issue and describe what you're trying to achieve so it will help us and be contribution in its own way. Thanks, Julien. So the next question is, when is it expected to go out of alpha? Well, you are already eager to use it in production, right? When it's ready. <laughs> Short answer, we don't know. It depends uh, with your feedback. Exactly. Hey, you could try to come work with us, so it would be faster, right? The next question is, can we use middlewares on TCP endpoints? Do you want to take that one? Oh, yeah, I can take that if you want. Um, so um, for now, uh, we don't have any middleware on the TCP port uh, because we don't, uh, we, we can't do it because we don't have middleware, but uh, this is pretty sure that in the uh, near future, uh, we will have uh, some middleware on the TCP port. Uh, but uh, we need to understand that this will not be HTTP middleware because we, we can be sure that uh, this is um, HTTP if you use TCP router. But we will be able to have middleware on TCP uh, when uh, we will have some use cases of middleware on TCP. Thanks. So the next question is, can we use middlewares on the response this time? Yeah, I think I talked about that one just before. Uh, we have some middlewares that act on the response itself, like the secure middleware, <coughs> secure headers middleware. And uh, Danielle is working on the middleware uh, for core support. So some middlewares will have uh, effect on the response itself. Yes. Thanks. Next and probably last question is, is it possible to run traffic as an ingress controller outside the Kubernetes cluster in a separate instance, for example? So, Technically, yes, you will lose the, all the features that Kubernetes provides you to ensure that traffic is always up and running. But stop me if I'm saying something wrong, but my understanding is that as soon as traffic can communicate with Kubernetes, it should be able to. However, I don't think it will be really usable because Kubernetes need to be aware about traffic running. So, 
unless you do some trickery trick, not sure it will be working easy and it will be create more pain than solving solution, right? So is that our last question? I believe that is. Um, correct, Damian? Yes, sounds For like now. answered everything. We didn't have new questions. Nice work. So I want to thank our audience, honestly, because um, most of you have stuck with us the whole time. You have stuck with us as we built the alpha. Um, and uh, you've given us great questions. Um, like I mentioned, there's a lot of online meetups coming up, one on Thursday. Um, if you want to be notified, please sign up to that email list. And I just send one, one per month uh, with the important information. If you have questions, you know how to reach us on Slack, our support channel. Um, and you can find our team on Twitter. We love to chat on Twitter and uh, let us know if you need anything. But until then, team, anything you want to say to our audience? Traffic team. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for thank you. using traffic. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good day, everyone.